Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. Apple has been, well, first of all, one's very fortunate if you get to work on just one of these in your career. Apple's been very fortunate. It's been able to introduce a few of these into the world. Today, we're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touch controls. The second is a revolutionary mobile phone. And the third is a breakthrough internet communications device. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. An iPod, a phone. Are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. Ten years ago, Steve Jobs took the stage at the Max World Expo in sunny San Francisco, California to release a product that would change the entire world as we know it forever. And this product would be known as iPhone. Today, today Apple is going to reinvent the phone. And here it is. <laughs> it touted a radical 3.5 inch display, bigger than any other mobile phone at the time, and also featured a higher resolution than more phones at 160 pixels per inch. And if you haven't seen our video where we talk about screen resolutions and what's actually practical in a display, bam, you can check out this video in the card above me. The screen also utilized multi-touch input, allowing for the user to navigate through the user interface with their fingers, instead of navigating by use of a set of buttons below the screen, which was an industry standard at the time. And how about that user interface? Apple actually created an operating system known as iOS, built upon their desktop operating system, OS X iOS used a lot of the same groundwork implemented in its desktop counterpart and relied heavily on iTunes for data transfer. It featured big icons placed on a home screen, allowing users to open applications by pressing on them and using one circular button to navigate back to the home screen, which should be called the home button. Under the hood, the iPhone was packing some serious heat, with a Samsung CPU clocked at 412 MHz and 128 megabytes of RAM. And certainly, the iPhone wouldn't be complete without a camera. The original one featured a crisp 2 megapixel shooter at the back of the phone for, at the time, high resolution photos. The phone was released exclusively on the AT&T network at the affordable price of $499. And that was for the base 4 gigabyte model. The upgraded 8 gigabyte model was going to run you $599, both of which required two year contracts. Now despite the original iPhone being ridiculously successful and selling over 6 million units, there were still flaws that existed in the phone. You couldn't communicate over 3G, there was no app store and third party application support, not to mention, at the base price of 500 bucks, this thing was really f***ing expensive. So in 2008, Apple looked to fix these problems by releasing iPhone 3G. It featured a minor plasticky redesign, but still sported the same internals as the previous generation. What made the iPhone 3G different from its predecessor was all in the name. The iPhone 3G was capable of using 3G networks, allowing for faster data speeds. The iPhone 3G was also the first phone to sport a GPS sensor within the phone, allowing for turn-by-turn -turn navigation in maps. The iPhone also shipped with the App Store, allowing for third-party application support by developers. But what about the price of the iPhone 3G? And I'm really happy to tell you that the iPhone 3G is going to sell for $199. Moving forward to 2009, the iPhone kept the original design that the iPhone 3G introduced, but received a facelift on the internals of the phone. And this iPhone would become known as... In the iPhone 3GS. Now the S... The, the S... simply stands for... It stands for speed because this is the most powerful, fastest iPhone we've ever made. You heard Phil Schiller right, the iPhone 3GS would be the next iPhone and would be based on the iPhone 3G design. 
except it would receive a facelift to the insides of the phone, all focused on speed. The next iPhone featured an ARM processor clocked at 600 megahertz, double the RAM count with 256 megabytes of RAM, some added sensors like an accelerometer and gyroscope, as well as an upgraded camera system. This camera had a 3 megapixel sensor and was the first iPhone that was capable of auto-focusing on subjects. This would also be the first iPhone able to record video footage, recording at VGA quality. Now, the update from iPhone 3G to 3GS marked the beginning of Apple's TikTok upgrade pattern, where the tick marked a brand new design in a phone, and the tock marked an update to the internals. So while the iPhone 3GS was a huge commercial success, it wasn't until 2010 that the world saw a redesign to the iPhone line, when Steve Jobs took the stage and released the brand new iPhone 4. The fourth generation iPhone. The iPhone 4 brought with it a brand new design featuring a metal band that wrapped around the chassis and housed the antennas, an incredibly sharp retina display, crisper than any other phone on the market at the time with 326 pixels per inch, a brand new camera system with a 5 megapixel sensor and the inclusion of an LED flash, and Apple's in-house A4 system on a chip, which featured a 1 gigahertz processor and 512 megabytes of RAM. Following the TikTok pattern, an iterative update would occur in 2011 with the iPhone 4S. This featured a slew of internal upgrades, such as the Apple A5 chip that featured two processing cores instead of just one, a new redesigned camera system with an 8 megapixel sensor instead of a 5 megapixel sensor, and a virtual assistant named Siri in which the S in the name is named after. The phone would ship with iOS 5 that allows users to set up the phone without the need for iTunes, the ability to store data in the iCloud, as well as receive over-the-air updates. Ladies and gentlemen, if you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down if you didn't like it, and leave some feedback down below. We read every single comment, and we are looking for any comments that we can get to help us grow this channel. If you do want to help us grow the channel, be sure to check out our other videos, and hit the subscribe button down below, and you'll stay updated to the latest videos. Speaking of which, next week's video, will be the second part of this series and it'll be uploaded next Wednesday so you definitely won't want to miss it. If you want to stay updated with the latest news in regards to tech porn, be sure to check the link below and you can follow our, our Twitter feed um, and be sure to share this video with all of your friends. We're looking for all the support we can get. This has been Tech Porn here on YouTube and thank you so much for watching.